Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm reviewing the Acer V35 Plus, a 35 watt diode laser engraver. Previously, I've reviewed quite a lot of 10 watt and 20 watt laser engravers, and as this 35 watt is priced similarly to the Xtool 20 watt D1 Pro, I'm very interested in seeing how it performs. Let's take a look at the features of this machine. One thing I noticed is that this machine is larger than other standard laser engravers, as its working area is 430 by 430 millimeters compared to the standard 400 by 400 millimeters. The frame is also more rigid than the standard open frame engraver with 20 by 20 extrusions, so this machine is similar to the Xtool D1 Pro in that sense. But instead of using steel wheels like the Xtool, its motion system uses rubber wheels that are commonly seen on budget 3D printers and engravers. The 35 watt module is composed of six 6 watt modules, so it can achieve a total power of somewhere around 35 watts. With a higher power, I'd expect this machine could cut thicker materials and run at a higher speed. It claims it can cut 18mm solid wood in a single pass, and the top speed is 24,800mm per minute, which is pretty fast. The machine comes with a 3.5 inch touchscreen that lets you start jobs stored in the micro SD card, and also has some basic controls like jogging the machine. It uses an HDMI cable to connect to the motherboard, which lets you move the screen outside the enclosure if you plan on using one. It has a Wi-Fi antenna to connect to their mobile app, but it doesn't come with any kind of computer software, so you have to use the free laser gerbil or pay $60 for light burn. The machine does come with an air assist pump with a knob to adjust the airflow, and it's powered by the same power supply as the machine itself using a splitter cable. The laser module uses a thumb screw at the back to adjust the Z height, and it has a lever to drop it down for you to measure the focal length on different materials. There are mechanical limit switches on both the X and Y axis, an emergency stop button, and a protective cover on the laser module. Overall, the specs and appearance of this machine are pretty nice. I would like to thank 8 for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. Putting this machine together is super easy. You just need to put the four sides of the frame in the correct position, put the X axis on top of the two Y axes, connect the laser module, the touch screen, the air assist pump, and tighten all of the screws. Other than the machine and air assist pump, we also have some tools, a user manual, and one power supply, which has a splitter cable to power the machine and the air pump at the same time. As this machine has a larger 430 by 430 working area, the enclosures I usually use, like the Comgirl laser tent and the X-Tool enclosure, are both smaller than the machine. So if you're going to use an enclosure, you need to get one from Aetzer. There's also a strong 16.8 watt exhaust fan at the rear right of the enclosure, and it comes with ducting, but I will just connect it to my existing one. It has a touchscreen that works as a controller, and it connects to the motherboard using an HDMI cable, so I can still have access to it when using the enclosure. I will home the machine to make sure the X and Y axis are working normally. I will start with a sample job, and jog the machine to the starting position using the touchscreen. Draw the preview frame, and it seems this sample job is pretty small. Let's start the job. Everything appears to be working fine, and we are ready to do more tests. I will now set this machine up in Lightburn. As Acer comes with a Lightburn profile, all you have to do is import the machine under the device menu. I will start by running a material test, and as this machine claims its top speed is 24,800 millimeters per minute, I will run a test starting from 5,000 and going up to 25,000 millimeters per minute with 10% to 100% power. The result is pretty nice, but surprisingly, I can't see much of a difference between 5,000 and 25,000 millimeters per minute. I would say the speed didn't go up, and everything was just engraved at the same or at similar speeds. 
Then I will try some cutting on the same 2mm MDF with a speed from 500 to 1500 millimeters per minute. For cutting, the difference is pretty obvious. Even though 2mm MDF is easy to cut, I didn't expect it to be able to cut at 1500mm per minute and that we need to push it further. But 1500 cutting is enough and with air assist, the edges are super clean. Next, I will use a 5mm sheet of plywood from Home Depot and run another cutting test from 100 to 1000mm per minute. When the job first started, I forgot to turn on the air assist pump so you can see the edges of the first square are much darker. This 35 watt module can cut through 5mm plywood at 800mm per minute, while a regular 20 watt can only cut through at a 500-600mm to per minute speed. I will try cutting the entire piece out using 800mm per minute and 100% power, and it cuts through completely without issues. After that, I will make a leopard by cutting out the Spectre Leopard from the 5mm plywood. As there are a lot of small cuts, which may require a little more power than a simple straight line, I will use a 500mm per minute speed and 100% power. The result is very clean, and every small detail was completely cut through. The edges on every last small piece are clean, showing that the air pump is really good for cutting. Next, I will try some photo engraving. I will use the suggested feed rate and power on the user manual, which is 6,000 millimeters per minute and 20% power. The estimated time of this job is 49 and a half minutes. The result is pretty good, but as the surface of MDF is not very consistent, you may see some black dots were burned too much, while other areas were completely fine. As this 35 watt laser module should be able to cut much thicker materials, I will start doing some wood cutting, starting with this half inch solid poplar wood. I will start with 300 millimeters per minute and 100% power, and it looks like it can cut through almost two thirds of the wood at this speed. So I will slow it down to 200 millimeters per minute. It can now cut pretty deep down to 3 quarters of the wood, so let's try 150 millimeters per minute. It's almost there, so I'll slow it down a little bit more to 120 millimeters per minute. The final cut at this speed was able to cut through completely. The rest of the cuts were done at 150, 200, and 300 millimeters per minute. Then, I would try some 19 millimeter pine wood, starting at a 60 millimeter per minute speed. It cut through completely, except for a tiny bit of wood still connected at the corner. I then sped it up to 80 millimeters per minute, and it didn't cut through, so we had to snap it apart. I would say that this machine can cut through 19 millimeter wood in one pass at 60 millimeters per minute or slower. Then I will try some different materials. Let's engrave some patterns on this round slate. I would just set the job to be larger than the actual slate, so the engraving pattern can cover the whole thing from edge to edge. The result is awesome. After that, I would try some metal cards. It actually burned off the coating on the surface and left only the original color of the metal card. As dialed laser engravers can't engrave on clear glass, I would try to engrave the same logo on this old 3D printer glass bed. My first attempt at 1000 millimeters per minute in speed and 50% power is too light, so I ran another pass at a 300 millimeters per minute speed and at 80% power. This time, the marks on the glass bed are much better, and this is how it looks from the back. Finally, I will try to make something with a rotary roller. 
The roller kit comes with four longer legs for you to replace the stock legs, so the machine can be raised up to fit with the rollers and taller objects. The kit actually includes two rollers. The first one is a regular one for traditional bottles and mugs. I will try to engrave some text at the bottom of the steel water bottle, and I will use a 1500 millimeters per minute speed with 80% power on the stainless steel surface. The text can be clearly seen and there are no issues. The second roller with the kit is like a claw, and it allows you to grip tiny objects as small as 1 millimeter. I will take one of the wine corks from my dad and try to engrave some text on it. I will also try to engrave on a golf ball, but as the surface of the ball is just like plastic, it got burned, and you can't really tell what was engraved on the surface. At least it shows the roller is capable of grabbing something like this. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. The build quality of this machine is pretty good. It's better than the average desktop engraver that uses four aluminum extrusions to form the frame. The build quality is not far from Xtool. 2. Generally, putting a laser engraver together is pretty straightforward, and the only part that takes up more time is installing the belt and adjusting the belt tension. But for this machine, the belts on the X and Y axis are pre-installed, so putting it together is even easier. 3. The machine has a touchscreen, which is handy when you use it at a shop or if you have G-code files that you need to run regularly, as you can save them all on the microSD card and use the touchscreen to jog to the starting position and start the job. This can completely get rid of the need to connect to the computer. 4. The built-in air assist pump is quite nice, and unlike other add-on air assist pumps, you won't see an adapter sticking out from the laser module. The pump itself is also pretty powerful. With a 30 liter per minute airflow rate, the cutting results are cleaner. Additionally, it uses the same 24 volt power supply as the machine, so you don't need another power cable or supply, but I will talk more about this later in the cons section. 5. It comes with a mobile app for you to connect to wirelessly, and though the app itself is not very impressive, it still allows you to start a job with some basic controls. It's not a total game changer, but having this extra option is handy if you want to do something really simple. 6. The accessories, including the laser enclosure and the rotary roller, are well made. So Acer's build quality is higher than other average brands. Now for the cons. 1. The actual maximum speed of this machine is around 6,000 to 7,000 milliliters per minute, which may be limited by the firmware. If you have experience using a diode laser at 20,000 or faster, you might know that the results are not very usable as the engraving is too light. But since this machine claims to be able to work at 24,800 millimeters per minute, I still wanted to see if it could actually engrave at that speed. In some cases, such as making a poster or signboard, where you just use the machine to mark some drafts on the board and use the lines or dots as a guide for drawing, painting, or drilling, the lightness of the engraving is not a concern. However, I just couldn't get the machine to move at any speed higher than 6-7k to millimeters per minute, as even if I set the speed to 20k, it still moves at the same speed as 6k. Additionally, the maximum recommended speed in the user manual is actually 7k millimeters per minute or slower, regardless of the material being engraved. I think Acer should really look into this issue. 2. The power supply uses a splitter cable to power the machine and the air pump at the same time. The good thing is, you don't need another power supply to power the pump, but the power supply that came with the machine is a 24 volt 6 amp. While the maximum power is 144 watts, the machine itself is rated at 160 watts, so I'm not sure how much the performance is decreased if a 144 watt PSU is used to power this 160 watt machine and the additional air pump. But for the cutting power test, I was able to cut 19mm solid wood in one pass, which is in line with what they claimed on their website. However, I would be happier to see a more powerful power supply used. In addition, if the air pump is powered by the motherboard, it can be controlled using G-code in Lightburn. This eliminates the need to manually turn the air assist on and off while working on jobs that involve both engraving and cutting operations, allowing for a more efficient workflow. 3. The risers are inconvenient. 
If you need to install the risers to use the rotary roller, you need to unscrew three screws on each side, or a total of 12 screws to remove the stock legs, and retighten another 12 screws to install the riser legs. It would be more reasonable to use some screw-on extension legs instead. 4. The touchscreen from MakerBase is the same as those on Atom stack machines, which means they're not very sensitive, and the screen UI is completely useless if there are no G-code files present in the microSD card, as it requires you to select a file before showing the controller screen. This workflow and UI design don't make sense, but as long as you keep at least one dummy G-code file in the microSD card, it still works fine. In conclusion, this is a well-built machine that stands out from other standard for extrusion open frame desktop laser engravers. I won't say it's as good as Xtool, but it's not far from it. For the same price as an Xtool 20W D1 Pro, this Acer V35 Plus offers a more powerful 35W laser module, and it comes with Air Assist that doesn't require you to purchase separately. They both offer a wide range of accessories that allow you to upgrade the machine and easily expand the features. However, you won't get the Xtool brand or the Xtool Creative Space software, which I use to do 95% of jobs without having to use Lightburn. But if you mainly use Lightburn, missing the Xtool software won't be a problem. Anyways, if you are interested in a higher quality than average and high power laser engraver, you can definitely take a look at this Acer V35 Plus machine. I put the link under the description. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you found this video useful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.